In the Thomas household, it is worm week, and I've joined in the fun and written about our amazing earthworms. What has not been so much fun was being greeted one morning by one of Ben's worms that had escaped from its wormery, which is residing in our kitchen. The humble earthworm does not get much thought from us. We take them for granted and may even be repulsed by them. They are actually incredibly important for the health of our soil. They are known as ecosystem engineers, and without them our soil is relatively unproductive. Darwin was fascinated by earthworms, and he wrote a book about them. It was to be his last book, as it was published just six months before he died in October 1881. The title of the book is The Formation of Vegetable Mould Through the Action of Worms with Observations on Their Habits. He studied earthworms for 40 years in his garden at Down House, which is situated in Kent in the UK. It included a 29-year experiment measuring the rate that a stone is buried by the burrowing activities of earthworms. If you live in the UK or come for a visit, then I recommend it as a place to go. It is absolutely fascinating, and you can even see the stone used in the 29-year experiment. It was this book that brought attention to just how important worms are to the health of our soil, and led to further research to be conducted by other scientists. There are about 7,000 species of earthworm on our planet, and they are found on every continent except Antarctica. Worms help to maintain the health of our soils in a number of ways. Earthworm burrows alter the physical structure of the soil. They open up small spaces known as pores within the soil. This brings water and soluble nutrients down to plant roots and enhances plant root penetration. Soil drainage is enhanced, which is particularly useful after rainfall. The burrows also minimise surface water erosion. Burrowing also improves soil aeration, which is important for both plants and other organisms living in the soil. Earthworms, along with the bacteria and fungi, decompose organic material such as plant litter and dung in pasture land and recycle leaf litter in wooded areas. Nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen become more readily available to the plants after digestion by earthworms and being excreted in earthworm casts. Earthworms also take nutrients down through the soil profile, bringing them into closer contact with plant roots. Many animals also depend on worms for food. They are a major food source for moles, badgers, hedgehogs and foxes. There are also many small animals that feed on earthworms, such as beetles and centipedes. There are three groups of earthworms. They are grouped based on their burrowing and feeding habits. Anisic earthworms are the largest and most common earthworms in the UK, they make vertical burrows in the soil up to six feet deep. They come to the surface at night to feed. They feed on leaves and other decaying matter, pulling it from the surface into their burrows. They are important for aerating the soil and increasing the water holding capacity of soils. These earthworms make piles of casts around the entrance to their burrows. And casts are digestive material that earthworms excrete. Enogiac worms live in the upper layers of soil, but rarely come to the surface. They make horizontal burrows in the soil, which are important for aerating the soil and allowing moisture and nutrients to move through the soil. Many enogiac worms live in the area immediately around plant roots, called the rhizophere, where they help with the exchange of nutrients there. Epigeic earthworms are not powerful burrowers and live on the surface of the soil, often in leaf litter and in compost. They rapidly consume the compost material and produce worm castings that are many times higher in nutrients than the material they originally consumed. These casts contain five times more nitrogen, seven times more phosphorus, and a thousand times more beneficial bacteria than the original soil. Because they live on the surface of the soil, they are much better at coping with temperature and moisture fluctuations than other worms. In 2018, a citizen science project carried out by UK farmers found that 42% of fields had poor earthworm diversity with very few or none of the surface dwelling and deep burrowing worms being seen. The average field had just nine earthworms in every 20 centimetre cube spadeful of soil. The more successful fields contained 16 or more worms per 20 centimetre cubed spadeful. The scientist who collated the data, Dr Stroud, said that the results indicate widespread historical overcultivation and may explain observed declines in other wildlife, such as the song thrush, that feed on these worms. There is also an absence of deep burrowing worms on 16% of the fields, which is concerning, as their vertical burrows aid water infiltration and ultimately helps combat water logging. Another issue facing earthworms is that of microplastics. Microplastics are plastic fragments that are less than 5mm in length and are found in our water, air and soil. 
Plastic fibres and dust can settle out of the air onto the soil and farmers sometimes spread treated sewage on farm fields as fertiliser, which can also contain microplastics. Many farmers also cover parts of their fields with plastic mulch to suppress weeds and to keep soils from quickly drying out. So microplastics can enter agricultural soil in a number of ways and unfortunately the earthworms will eat it. In a report published in 2019, scientists carried out an experiment where worms were weighed and then placed in pots containing soil. One pot contained microplastics and the other was free of microplastics. They planted the pots with ryegrass seeds and left the worms for 30 days. Afterwards, the worms had a second weigh in. Those living in plastic free soil gained an average of 5.1% over their starting weight during the month, whilst those in pots containing microplastic dropped 3.1% of their starting weight. The scientists don't know why the worms lost weight, but it could be that the microplastic particles irritated their guts or chemicals in the plastic might have interfered with the worm's ability to pick up nutrients from the soil. More research needs to be done. Another observation was that the ryegrass growing with plastic was stunted when compared with the grass growing in clean soil. Although the scientists could not say whether the stunted grass was due to the smaller worms in their pot or the toxic effects of the plastic, and plan to complete some more experiments to find this out. So we need to look after the worms in our soil. They are vital to the health of soil, and healthy soil is needed to provide us humans with the food that we need, as well as them providing a meal for wildlife further up the food chain. As Darwin writes in the conclusion to his book on worms, they have played a more important part in the history of the world than most persons would at first suppose. <laughs>